it's your girl Ash and I am back back with another video and today I'm going to be reacting to Animals in Space, A Brief History by Sam Manella Academy. We already know Sam is extremely funny, very informative as well. And if you guys would like to check out my other Sam Manella reactions, the link will be up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Hit that red button so you can be a part of the family. Don't forget to give your girl a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button. Enough of me talking. Let's get straight into this reaction. Hey kids, animal test subjects have always been an important facet of science since they allow us to study physiology in more destructive ways than we could get away with on humans. So it should come as no surprise that... I always wondered like when I buy certain like beauty products and stuff like that and it always say um what is the it says like animal safe or animal tested and I always wanted to know which animals did they try the products on like was it a cat was it a dog was it a monkey they never specify so I don't know. Over the years, there's been a lot of creatures haphazardly thrown at the cosmos against their will. Here's a bunch of smelly animals that achieved more in their short lives than you ever will. Quick disclaimer, this is by no means a comprehensive list, not even close. We'd be here all day if it was. More so just a highlight reel of the ones I found the most interesting. So the Great Zoo in the Sky was first founded in 1947 when the U.S. launched a craft containing a bunch of fruit flies 68 miles into the air in order to see what kind of horrible mutants would get made from all the cosmic radiation up there. Unfortunately, they were totally fine. So the Earth was like, hey, living things can go into space and not die instantly. Supple. And the next year, they decided to send up a rhesus macaque named Albert, which it seems kind of like jumping the gun to go from barely alive specks to basically a person in one step. If it were me, I would have thrown like a frog or a gerbil <laughs> in between there, but whatever. I'm no cosmopolitan. Anyway, Albert died of suffocation on the way up and never really made it to space alive. Fun fact, this rocket was actually a V-2 missile stolen from the Germans after World War II. So did it wasn't there like a movie of like a monkey or something like that that went into space what was the name of that movie i don't know but i really loved that movie and i remember watching it as a little kid crying i don't know which which part i cried at or why i was crying but i know it was like a sad story I think it was a movie. If you guys remember the movie or the name of the movie, comment down below and let me know. But just in case any of you have any sympathy for those Nazi characters, they're technically responsible for the death of a poor innocent space monkey. Pretty condemning, if you ask me. But I guess the U.S. felt pretty bad about it, so they decided to deal with their grief by naming the next monkey Albert II. Pretty <laughs> unhealthy coping mechanism, according to my shrink. Just but she also thinks junior. Punk is dead, so what does she know? This Albert actually made it into space alive through a grand effort incorporating all the incredible cutting-edge technology that the Atomic Era had to offer. And after all that... They goofed on the parachute, so Albert II turned into a fine red mist on impact, which just goes to prove the age-old adage, you can lead a monkey to space, but you can't make him land. <laughs> there were a few more Alberts <laughs> after this. Albert three fucking exploded. Albert four made it up, but he had another tissue paper parachute what don't work for heck, so he's out. Albert five, yet again, bad shoot, liquefied on impact, until finally, in 1951, on Albert number six, they figured out how to make a big blanket that consistently makes you not... Im Why did they keep naming them Albert? Albert number one, two, three, four. Why? What was the purpose behind that? That's kind of, like, dumb. Especially if they weren't related. Immediately die when you fall from the sky. It's and the monkey like was recovered curse. alive from the capsule alongside his 11 mouse roommates. Of course, he died two hours later, but hey, it still counts. <laughs> Earlier that same year, Russia launched two little pupniks named Tsigan and Dizik, both of whom came back unharmed. These two were the first vertebrates to ever leave Earth and come back alive. Then in 57, the Reds snagged another achievement by putting the first living thing into orbit. Besides the bacteria clinging to Sputnik 1, but they're losers, we don't talk about them. Specifically, they launched one brave and daring dog from the streets of Moscow, probably the most famous animal to ever go into space. You know its name well. That dog is, of course, 
Air Bud. Unlike those other guys we talked about, yeah. Leica was never planned to be recovered intact since we barely knew how to put something into orbit by this time, let alone bring it back. But they still wanted to make sure she stayed alive long enough to at least reach space. So before the mission, they put her through the most rigorous canine space camp that Russia had to offer. Throwing her in a centrifuge for a while <laughs> to get her used to G-force, making her cage progressively smaller that to get her used dog. to cramped spaces, which made her just not shit anymore at all. What? But that's a different story. They also switched her diet. So if the dog didn't release itself, can't, I don't even, I don't even want to know. To a special high nutrition gel that she would have eaten after takeoff, you know, had her brain not crapped out from overheating within the first few hours. In 59, Damn. the US strapped two monkeys to the nose cone of a Jupiter missile and actually got them back alive afterwards, which is crazy mostly because these things withstood 38 Gs of acceleration. For context, that's the force that makes even trained pilots lose consciousness times four, or this thing times 12, or roughly the same forced experience when you realize that's not a normal speed bump, but one of those evil tiny ones that ruin in your life you know the ones well that's what you get for doing 25 near a hospital sam <laughs> well hey good thing i'm already here considering the ballistics test that just went down between the roof of my car and my freaking skull jesus <laughs> so in 61 we graduated from monkeys to great apes sending up a chimpanzee named ham remember space chimps yeah it was that space chimps oh my god yes that was the movie Oh my god, now I want to watch the movie. What's special about Ham is that he was actually trained to pull levers and slap buttons while up in the ship, being rewarded banana pellets for completing tasks and getting his feet tased whenever he messed up. Sounds like a That's cartoon, I know, but I promise it's for real. Meanwhile, the Soviets were busy putting a big, bald, smart ape into orbit. No big deal. France saw the US and Russia sending up monkeys and dogs and felt left out, so in 63, they launched a cat into space and were like, yeah, that's cool and unique. I'm one of the popular kids now. <laughs> in 68, the Soviets saw the rabbit making rice cakes on the moon and Said, hmm, how about a tortoise for that hair? Launching two of them into deep space, all the way around the moon and back to Earth, where they were recovered alive after their capsule landed in the ocean. Kind of cheating when you are your own crash suit, but an impressive feat regardless. In 73, we put mummy chogs in space. What's a mummy chog? Mummy it's chogs. one of these things. Like a fish, but real rough and tumble. Tolerates low oxygen, weird pressure, high salinity, dishwasher safe, energy star rated, you name it, sister. At first, they could only Never swim in circles, but after a couple weeks, they actually adapted to zero G and figured out how to maneuver properly. Properly. Even more interesting, we also brought mummy chog eggs. And when these hatched, the little mummy choglets knew how to swim in zero G immediately. Kind of spooky, honestly. That same mission also sent up some spiders who managed to spin some webs. Trash webs, mind you, but hey, they managed. In 78, the Muppet Show aired Pigs in Space for the first time. <laughs> in 85, we cut off the arms of a bunch of newts and sent them up to see if they grow back the same way. The reasoning behind this being, if a newt can't grow stuff back then, an astronaut with a paper cut probably can't either. Fortunately, they rearmed themselves at the normal rate, so all's good on that front. Around the same time, NASA actually had talks with Sesame Street about sending Big Bird up on the space shuttle. Stop. Stop. You gonna send Big Bird? Big Bird from Sesame... from Sesame Street? There's no way in hell. They was just trying anything at this point. How you gonna send the Sesame Street character out of space? You can't do that. Then what the kids gonna watch? a publicity stunt. This is real. The plan ultimately fell through after they realized Big Bird is fucking giant and unwieldy at all times. Literally the worst possible choice for a celebrity Too cameo big. on a space shuttle. So instead they sent a school teacher in his place. And then the Challenger fucking exploded. Let me reiterate. There is a timeline not too far from this one where Big Bird is a casualty. Imagine if Big Bird would have been on that rocket. I mean, on that spaceship or whatever. Oh my gosh. That would have been the biggest thing ever, I'm pretty sure. Because Sesame Street is a big deal for the children. Growing up, I love Sesame Street. Big Bird was my favorite character. Elmo was my favorite character. Dracula was my favorite character. I would have had a bitch fit if I would have found out um, 
A big bird blew up. In the single worst astronautical disaster in history, a tiny evil part of me almost wishes that happened. Like, that's just so indescribably absurd. In the early what? 90s, we set up some baby jellyfish to grow up in space just for laughs. They figured out how to maneuver just fine, that's but when we brought them back you. down, they literally didn't have a concept of gravity and couldn't orient themselves properly in their new environment. Which, being a jellyfish is the easiest thing there is. You just kind of exist, maybe squirm a little now and then. So when you manage to somehow mess that up, you know things have gone seriously wrong. In 2003, the US sent up a bunch of invertebrates, including silkworms, spiders, carpenter bees, and harvester ants. Whoops, they exploded. And as seven oh tardigrades went up, totally exposed to the vacuum of space for 10 days, which, surprise, surprise, they were fine. On that same mission a cockroach gave birth oh. creating the first organism that we Ooh. know of to ever have been conceived outside of earth Roaches and finally in 2018 everything. elon musk sent a big basket of mice to the international space station just you know because he can so those are just a handful of God's creatures who got to experience the majesty of not knowing up from down. If you're like me, you're probably a little jealous. Why does an ugly ape get to go into space, but I don't? I wish to bear witness to the music of the jealous. spheres firsthand in a way that a lower creature could never appreciate. You know why you feel like that? Because you're a nerd. And what better way to fill that space-shaped space in your shriveled nerd heart no than a vast collection no of high-quality documentaries? That's why you need to try Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream was founded by the dude behind the Discovery Channel, and it's an absolute treasure trove if you're someone like me Curiosity who feeds off useless knowledge like a loach sucking algae off a fish tank. And with over 2,400 titles, a lot of which are Curiosity Stream exclusives, it'd be hard not to find something that interests you. I personally recommend Deep Ocean, The Lost World of the Pacific. There's some freaky things down there, like basically aliens. The whole thing is just one massive trip. You can get unlimited access to their full library for just $2.99 a month. I know it's a cliche, but that's literally less than a cup of Starbucks coffee a month. Also, you can get your first 30 days completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com slash salmonella and use promo code salmonella during the sign up process. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm salmonella and I still don't know what ligma is. <laughs> I still don't know what ligma is. Listen, there is no way you would be using me as a test dummy. No, I never thought about going to space. That doesn't even look like fun. It looks like when they have like their um, astronaut suits on and stuff like that, it looks like they can't breathe. I would literally have an anxiety attack, okay? I would probably freak out. I probably would die from having an anxiety attack from just like panicking. But that's messed up that they thought about sending um Big Bird from Sesame Street and Sam over there talking about he wish it would have happened. Sam, that's messed up. You knew you grew up watching Sesame Street. Sesame Street was a big deal, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Give your girl a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, fam.